Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today on this episode, we're going to see if we can't figure out why you're not catching more fish during the winter time. Now, the reason I wanted to do this video is because I struggle in winter time uh, traditionally. I've gotten a lot better over the last decade or so, but when I first started fishing, especially fishing bass tournaments, the winter time was a time period that I just didn't understand. You know, I, I tended to do uh, all the things that they were saying in the textbooks of bass fishing, which there's not one textbook, but I read a lot of books on bass fishing and was trying to duplicate that on the lake during the coldest months of the year. And I was struggling. And winter time is one of those times of year, especially out here on like lakes like Chickamauga or really any of the TVA lakes or really any lakes around here, is the fact that it's either boom or bust. You're going to have a phenomenal day where you can catch 25 to 30 pounds, or you can have that day where you only get one bite throughout the day. And usually it's a big one, so it kind of makes up for it. But it's still a slow day where you're just scratching your head. So that feast or famine, uh, you know, thing that happens during the winter time can be very, very frustrating and leaves you wondering what you're doing wrong. So so I've put together a list of five different things you might be doing that is affecting your ability to catch more fish during the winter time. So let's get started. All right, so the number one reason you might not be catching a lot of fish during the winter time is that you're fishing too fast. One of the things to remember about the winter time is that you're dealing with cold blooded animals. So when the water gets cold, they get really sluggish and you know, there's a lot of times you can catch fish on reaction baits, and we're going to be talking about that later in the video. But for the most part, you need to remember that their strike zone, the distance that they're willing to travel to to get your bait, is much smaller this time of year than, say, during the summertime or the fall or even the spring. Their strike zone is pretty small. So if you're fishing fast-moving baits, the odds are if you're not making a pinpoint cast and getting it right on their nose, you're probably working that bait through the strike zone too fast, which is always an issue when the strike zones are very, very small. So make sure that you're using slower presentations. And that doesn't mean that you have to fish you know, a worm or a jig all the time. You can fish reaction baits but fish them slower. Something like a, a suspending jerk bait is a perfect example of a bait that is designed to be able to be fished fast, but you can slow down, hover it right in front of their faces, give them a little bit of time, and stay in that strike zone longer. Same thing with like a lipless crankbait. A yo-yo technique is really popular this time of year because it stays in their strike zone longer. So you see a lot of guys throwing lipless crankbaits out there and they're not necessarily fishing them very fast all the time. Sometimes they're just slow rolling it or hopping it through, you know, whatever vegetation is left on a lake. So even if you're fishing reaction baits, slow it down. Remember the strike zone is small and so you don't want to bring your bait too fast through that strike zone. All right, so the next reason is you may not be around the bait fish. Uh, just like every other time of the year, bait fish uh, presence is really, really important. And during the winter time, really there's two different, uh, you know, distinct timelines as far as the type of forage that the fish feed on, it, at least in my book. What I see around here is the, the during the beginning of winter time, when the, uh, the water temps are just getting into the lowest that they're going to be for the year, that's when fish are focused on shad. They're chasing those schools of, of bait fish. So if you're not around the shad and you're not seeing birds diving down and you're not seeing, uh, you know, uh, the, the shad on your, your electronics and things like that, you're probably not going to get a lot of bites. So make sure that you seek out those shad. Same thing with the crawfish. Later on in, in, in the uh, wintertime, I really like to switch over to crawfish patterns and you have to be around those areas that have the crawfish, whether that's a certain type of rock that holds a lot of crawfish or uh, the last remaining grass. If you find grass in the lake during the winter time, like out here on Lake Chickamauga, you're going to have some bass around because there's a lot of crawfish that live in that grass as it's decomposing and breaking down. The, there's, there's certain crawfish that love feeding on that type of vegetation. So be around the bait fish. If you're not, you're probably not going to get a lot of bites. All right, so the third reason is you might be fishing way too deep. Now, this is something that went against everything that I read about wintertime fishing. And really, when I learned that I was making a mistake by just fishing deep, 
uh, I really started catching a lot more fish during the winter time because not all fish live deep during the winter time. You'd think that they'd want to be down in those, those deeper areas, but a lot of times the most active fish are shallow. I mean, dirt shallow, like a foot or two type shallow. Uh, you know, out here in Lake Chickamauga, we've got Florida strain bass. And if the sun comes out, those fish start roaming the flats and that, like that's where they're feeding. And so uh, don't avoid shallow water. It's really, really important that you try some shallow water areas because you might be surprised by how many fish live shallow during the wintertime. All right, guys, so the next reason you might not be catching enough fish during the wintertime is because you're fishing structure. You're focused on that, that textbook point, that textbook hump, that ridge, whatever it may be. Uh, those fish may not be relating to structure this time of year as much as you'd think. So one of the things that I've learned out here on, on uh, the lakes that we have here is that during the wintertime, a lot of fish suspend. They're really just roaming around and they're not relating to any specific type of structure. Now there's plenty of fish that are related to structure. So don't let me get you, you, you know, searching only out there in, in the ether, you know, in open water. There's definitely a lot of things like bluffs, um, you know, uh, points and, and things like that, that the fish get on during the winter time. But I have really expanded my fishing by looking for suspended and roaming fish in open water. And really where this is important is kind of the earlier part of the, the winter time, especially when the fish are hyper focused on shad. Now, if they're focused on shad during any time of the, the winter time, <clears throat> you definitely want to go after them that way as well. But a lot of these fish don't care what type of structure is around. They only care if there's bait fish. And if they're following a school of bait fish, they don't care if there's a point or a ledge or whatever there. They're just going to be out there roaming around. And the beautiful thing is with the advent of forward-facing sonar, Finding these roaming fish has never been easier. So if you're tired of beating the bank and fishing point and hump and ledge after one after the other and not catching fish, look to open water, find the bait fish, and you'll likely find some bass. All right, guys, the final reason you might not be catching enough fish during the winter time is because you're not fishing the sunniest days. I've, I've already did a video on this a few days ago. Um, you know, one of the things that I've learned over the years, especially when I was fishing down in Florida, is the fact that uh, even though we as anglers are conditioned to believe that the calmest, sunniest days are like the kiss of death for bass fishing, during the winter time, it's the exact opposite a lot of times because those fish just want warmth. And the best days to be able to absorb that warmth is on the calmest, sunniest days. Regardless of how cold it is, uh, you know, as far as the ambient air temperature, it's going to be warmer in the water, especially around some type of dark cover that's absorbing that sunlight. So when it's sunny and calm, that is one of the best situations possible for you to go out and fish reaction baits shallow. And it, it is definitely one of the best bites that you can find during the winter time more than often. So if you've got a calm, sunny day, don't bring it to the house. Bring it to the ramp because that is one of the best situations to catch wintertime bass when they're most active. All right, guys, so hopefully these five different scenarios uh, kind of open your eyes to the potential for wintertime fishing. There's a lot of things to learn about wintertime. I'm still learning, but these are five things that I've made mistakes with in the past, and hopefully they'll help you not make the same mistakes. Uh, let me know what you think about this topic in the comment section below. Other than that, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and I'm going to see you out on the water. Trust the process.